Now we haven't explained why the enthalpy change of solution is sometimes positive in this case and sometimes negative. I'm going to compare this with the same diagram or similar cycle for lithium chloride. So I'm choosing something deliberately very similar to sodium chloride to try and show you the difference or why there's a difference. But basically we're looking at the relative sizes of the lattice enthalpy versus the hydration enthalpies, the sum of the hydration enthalpies. So you can probably see that if this orange line was longer, so in other words the hydration enthalpies were more exothermic than the lattice enthalpy, then the, the this solution arrow would point down instead. You'll see that more clearly when I do the next example. So again I'm going to tell you the enthalpy change of solution for lithium chloride now is minus, so it's an exothermic process when it dissolves in water, and it's minus 37.1 kilojoules per mole. So we'll have a look at the cycle for that first. So we'll start with what we know from here. So that means that the solid ionic lattice, so we'll put that there, so LiCl solid, when we turn that into aqueous ions, so that's in other words Li plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous, it's an exothermic process so this arrow goes down and therefore we'll just put on there delta H sol. So again, how did we do it before? Well, we put the gaseous ions up there. So that will be Li plus gas, Cl minus gas. There's the lattice enthalpy. Le. And we need to connect the cycle here now. So we've got the two hydration enthalpies. So we've got this arrow here, that's going to be the lithium gaseous, Li plus gaseous to Li plus aqueous. And we've got chloride ions still as gaseous. So that's delta H hide lithium ions. And this is obviously the enthalpy change of hydration of the chloride ion, delta H hide Cl minus. So the cycle looks slightly different, and hopefully you can appreciate why, because of the, um, the fact that we've got an exothermic process here, whereas this one was an endothermic process, so the solution arrow goes up. There's the two routes for you. So we've got the blue route and the orange route, and you'll be pleased to know that the um, Hess's law treatment of this is exactly the same as the endothermic one. So it doesn't matter if it's exo or endothermic, the, the sort of way you treat the numbers is exactly the same. So it's delta H Le plus delta H Sol equals the sum of delta H Hyde. And then obviously we'll take the lattice enthalpy over to there and it becomes minus delta H Le, just like that. So that is exactly the same equation as before. So we're nearly in a position now to explain, well, why is this one exothermic, whereas the sodium chloride one was endothermic? I'll just quickly show you this, so you can see that what's caused this arrow to go down, well, if we look at the lattice enthalpy here, that line is shorter than the sum of the hydration enthalpies. So the hydration enthalpies are obviously outweighing the lattice enthalpy, and so the, the difference, the gap if you like, is continuing to go down. So that's exothermic. So we're going to look at the factors now. What caused this? Now, if you've already studied lattice enthalpy and born harbor cycles, you'll know about these two factors. So the first factor that's going to influence the magnitude or the how exothermic these enthalpy changes are is ionic size. So smaller ions, the smaller the ionic radius, the greater the attraction. So in the case of lattice enthalpy, 
um, where ions are attracting each other, the positive and the negative, the smaller they are, the more exothermic the lattice enthalpy will be. And the same goes with water molecules, attraction between ions and water molecules, the smaller the ion, the more exothermic the enthalpy change of hydration will be. And the other factor is obviously the ionic charge. So the greater the charge, the greater the attraction. So in the case of lattice enthalpy, the ions, the oppositely charged ions are attracting each other. So if that's two plus, there'll be a greater attraction than if it was just one plus. And also with hydration enthalpy, obviously the ions, the gaseous ions are being attracted to the water molecules. The greater the charge, the greater the attraction between the two particles and therefore the more exothermic these two enthalpy changes will be. So to explain the reason why the enthalpy change of solution for lithium chloride is actually exothermic, I've put both of the cycles side by side and I'm being very deliberate in the length of certainly one of the arrows, this one here, um, because both of these cycles involve the enthalpy change of hydration of the chloride ion. So hopefully you can see that that's the same length. So because that's obviously the same um, enthalpy change. So if we look at the ions involved in lithium chloride and compare them with sodium chloride, we've got a common ion. So chloride ion, we can forget about that because that's common to both. So let's think about, well, what are the differences between the lithium ion and the sodium ion? Well, lithium is higher up group one than sodium. So it's got fewer electrons, fewer electron shells. It's therefore a smaller ion. So it's got a smaller ionic radius. So this is going to, let's just put that in, smaller ionic radius. So that means that lithium chloride will have uh, more exothermic delta H Le, lattice enthalpy, so you can see the arrow views there, there's the lattice enthalpy for lithium chloride versus sodium chlorides. It's about three or four millimetres shorter. No, it's, it's more, isn't it? It's about a centimetre shorter. So that's definitely a shorter arrow. And the other thing is the hydration enthalpy will be more exothermic as well for the lithium ion. So it's a bit like, I don't know how best way to think about this, it's kind of a competition. These arrows for lithium chloride are both um, getting longer compared to the sodium um, hydration and the sodium chloride lattice enthalpy. Now it looks as though this hydration enthalpy is the, is the key one. That's, that's sort of brought about this exothermic enthalpy change of solution. So they're both getting more exothermic, but this has kind of won out and it's tipped this cycle sort of downwards. So we'll finish with a question. We've got some data here, some hydration enthalpy data for the calcium 2 plus ion and the chloride ion. And we're also given the enthalpy change, the lattice enthalpy, sorry, for calcium chloride. So we're going to create a cycle first. Now, we don't know at this point whether this is going to be an exothermic or an endothermic process. Don't worry about that. Remember I said at the start that the doesn't matter which cycle you use, um, you, the method's the same, so you're going to get the right answer. Um, I know what the answer is, so I'm going to draw the cycle um, correctly, but um, don't worry about that. So let's start with the, um, the lattice enthalpy, shall we? So we'll put the gaseous ions at the top there. So we've got a calcium 2 plus ion and two chloride ions. They are the gaseous ions needed to make one mole of calcium chloride. So that would be CaCl2 solid. 
and we know from the data that's minus 2258 kilojoules per mole. Now I know the answer is exothermic so I'm going to drop the arrow down don't, again don't worry um, you're not going to be penalized if your cycle is drawn the wrong way you can't be expected to know what the cycle has got to look like if you don't know whether it's exothermic or endothermic so calcium chloride solid to the aqueous ions will be Ca2 plus aqueous so this is the enthalpy change of solution and we're going to have two chloride ions aqueous so this is the unknown one we don't know what that enthalpy change is and the other um, enthalpy changes are these hydration enthalpies so the first one will do the calcium ion so we've got Ca2 plus aqueous and we've got two chloride ions gaseous they, they haven't changed yet that's minus 1650 kilojoules per mole and this arrow here well, what does that represent? That represents two hydration enthalpies for the chloride ion. So we've got to be careful here. This is going to be 2 times minus 3, 6, 4. So we're applying Hess's law now. We've got two roots, an orange one and a red root, both start and finish common points. So what are the enthalpy changes in the orange root? Minus 2258 plus our unknown. And that equals the sum of the hydration enthalpies, remember, and we have to double the chloride one. And when we rearrange that and solve for the question mark, we get minus 120 kilojoules per mole. So like I said, I already knew that it was negative, so that's why I drew the cycle like that. But if you in the exam went up there and joined the hydration enthalpies, you'd still get the same answer because this bit's identical.